conference call hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Mahendra Nahata. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry for a little delay. It happened because of some connectivity issues. I'm delighted to welcome you all to HFCS annual call for the fourth quarter and financial year ended 2023. I trust that you got a chance to review our financial results, press release, and investor presentation, all of which are available on the website of the company and also on the website of Stock Exchange. During financial year 2023, the global economy faced challenges such as financial market volatility, high inflation, slower growth. However, despite these headwinds, India remains a promising economy and is expected to emerge as the fastest growing in the world. The telecom industry during financial year 2023 has witnessed significant growth and expansion both in India and globally with increasing adoption of broadband technologies, including broadband wireless technologies, 5G network rollouts, and the growing demand for high-speed data connectivity driving continued innovation investment in the sector. Indian government has maintained a focus on key priorities, such as the nationwide implementation of 5G networks, fiberization as part of HarapNet, and MHI projects, and also encouraging participation in PLI schemes to promote indigenous design and manufacturing of telecom and network products. These priorities have been fueled by the all-around rapid digital transformation and the amplified need of high-speed data, together with integration of advanced technologies such as artificial intelligence, IoT, and machine learning. Friends, so, PWD predicts that the implementation of 5G technology will add 1.3 trillion dollars to the global GDP and projects an economic impact of 42 US dollar, US dollar billion to the Indian economy by 2030. This backdrop makes us confident to kickstart the new financial year on a positive note. HFCL has been tirelessly working in these transformational areas by designing relevant new technology equipment and thereby also increasing scope of its network services portfolio. These efforts will result in extension of its addressable market and will also boost its revenue and profitability. FY23 was a year of transformation for HSPM. As we continue with several key initiatives to design 5G and various other broadband wireless products, these products included 8 r macro radio unit, cell site router, 2 and 4 gigabit per second point to point and point to multi point unlicensed and reduced, indoor and outdoor small cells, outdoor fixed wireless access customer premises equipment, and various kinds of aggregation routers. All these products are scheduled to be launched during the current financial year and are expected to have huge demand opportunities globally. Launch of these products will bring in higher revenue and profitability to the company in coming years. Recognizing company's efforts and initiative in designing of telecom equipment, Government of India has already sanctioned designing the incentive up to 650 crores to the company. Furthermore, the company has entered into some crucial technology partnerships with Qualcomm, Microsoft, Lucro, for developing cutting edge 5G products and solutions. These partnerships are boosting up companies' R&D capabilities and are also helping to develop and productionize new products at much faster pace. During the year, we also strategically worked towards our expansion in key global markets like United States, Europe, and Middle East. We are aimed to become a global player in optical fiber cable, telecom and network products, and system integration space. Our continued focus on creating and expanding capacity 
and tapping new geographies has not only led to an increase in share of product revenue to 56% in FY23 as compared to 43% in FY22, but has also resulted in the increased share of revenue from private customers to 83% in FY23 from 68% in FY22. These are two very important achievements. We are currently operating in over 30 countries with 80 plus clients and building long-term relationships across large and fast-growing markets for achieving higher export revenue. Persistent efforts are being made by the company by appointing employees and engaging agents and distributors in key markets like France, Germany, England, Poland, Australia, UAE, Turkey, Kenya, United States, and several other countries. All these endeavors have led significant increase in our export revenue during FI23 to 817 crore rupees from 363 crore rupees in FI22, witnessing a growth of 125% on year on year basis. One of the significant developments in the quarter is our collaboration with Microsoft to launch private 5G solutions for enterprises. Our partnership will help us offer highly scalable and rapidly deployable solutions for enterprises. We foresee the private 5G networks can offer numerous benefits to the manufacturing sector, including increased productivity, improved efficiency, and cost savings, and enable enterprises in their industry 4.0 journey. The company will also developing use cases of these areas to offer integrated solutions to the enterprises which will lead to competitive advantage to the company with improved profit margin. We are proud to share that HFCL AML is India's first enterprise enabled the deployment of world broadband alliances, open roaming access, its entire in Wi-Fi portfolio. Currently, we are working with multiple telecom operators in India and two other countries to deploy open roaming, and we have plans to scale its reach across the globe and make the most of this first mover advantage. In quarter four FI23, we signed distributing agreements with EPS Global to expand our footprint in global markets such as North and Central America, Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Through this partnership, we are tapping new markets for our products and solutions, ranging from advanced indoor and outdoor Wi-Fi 6 access points and commercial and industrial switches, high-powered gigabit UOE plus injectors and the world's first open source enterprise grade Wi Fi 7 access points, among others. Further, HFCL has also signed an exclusive distribution agreement in the UK's leading distributor, Verticom Limited, to further strengthen its footprint in the UK and Ireland markets. We have also entered into a strategic partnership with Six Wind, a leading government tech networking, a green tech networking company for optimized, sustainable, and cost-effective 5G solutions based on its innovative and market-leading virtual service router and software products. The government of India, at the same time, is doing a commendable job to foster the deployment of 5G networks and rollout of OFC networks in the country. HFCL work is working to capture a larger share of the expanding optical fiber cable market, which is projected to reach a cumulative value of US dollars 250 billion worldwide and US dollars 10 billion in domestic markets during the period of financial year 2023 to 2028. In order to further strengthen the supply chain and improve the profit margin, the company is expanding its optical fiber capacity for existing 10 million fiber kilometers to 25 million fiber kilometers by quarter two of FY25. With this extended capacity of optical fiber, company is expected to generate additional profitability of rupees 150 crores every year on annualized basis, computed at swelling market price vis a vis current cost of in house production of optical fiber. In addition, the company is also in process of expanding its optical fiber cable production capacity from 25 million fiber kilometers to 35 million fiber kilometers. This extension will also lead to a significant increase in revenue and profitability. 
The company has also created Center for Excellence for development of new types of optical fiber cables in its manufacturing facility in Hyderabad. These new types of cables are expected to further increase company's revenue from the export market. The company's subsidiary STL Limited has also developed tactical optical fiber cables required for different forces. Friends, I also wish to update you all that the development of various 5G radio access network and transfer products is progressing well. And we will be launching 5G fixed wireless customer premises equipment, 5G small cells, 2 and 4 gigabit per second point to point and point to multi point back or UVR, routers and various of various capacities, and 88 hour macro radio units during current financial year. Total addressable market from such products worldwide is expected, expected to be US dollar 550 billion by 2028. Companies in process of setting up facility for the manufacture of these products and targeting a revenue of 800 to 1000 crores in FY2425 compared to only rupees 130 crores achieved in FY2223 from existing products portfolio. These products are also eligible for PLI incentives up to 650 crores over a period of four to five years, as per approval received by the company from Government of India. Increase in revenue from these products, which are owned, designed, and owned manufactured, will also lead to higher margin and profitability. This quarter, the fourth quarter of FY23, was marked with HSL winning some key purchase orders. As a result, our order book has grown to more than rupees 7,000 crores as compared to 5,300 crores in the same quarter last year. Some of our major wins in the quarter have been contracts of rupees 283 crores from the Gujarat Metro Rail Corporation Limited and rupees 575 crores from Reliance for its telecommunication Let me now brief you on the key performance metrics for 12 months ended on March 23 and also quarter four FY23. For the 12 months ended 31st March 23, the company reported consolidated revenue of 4,743 crores as against 4,727 crores in March 2022. EBITDA was 664 crores as against 690 crores in March 2022. Profit before tax of 430 crores as against 440 crores in March 2022. And profit after tax of 317 crores as against 326 crores in March 2022. Revenue of quarter four of FI23 stood at between 1433 crores as compared to 1086 crores in FI23 and 1183 crores in quarter four of FI22, with an increase of 21.13% on year on year basis. EBITDA for the quarter stood at rupees 168 crores as compared to rupees 194 crores in Q3 or FI23 and rupees 150 crores of Q4 or FI22. EBITDA margin stood at 11.7% for quarter 4 of FI23 as compared to 17.8% of quarter 3 of FI23 and it stood at 12.99% at quarter 4 of 2022. From quarter 4 FY23, profit after tax is stood at rupees 79 crores as compared to 102 crores of quarter 3 FY23 and 68 crores of quarter 4 FY22. Fat margin is stood at 5.49% in the quarter under consideration in compared to 9.36 of quarter 3 of FY23 and 5.76% in quarter 4 FY22. Segment revenue for telecom products during the quarter is stood at 650 crores, 54 crores, as compared to 693 crores in quarter 3 of FY23 and 585 crores in quarter 4 of FY22. While margins during quarter under review are low compared to previous and corresponding quarters due to execution of some low margin contracts in the quarter. The overall margin for FY23, however, are intact despite increased input costs and supply chain disruption followed by Russia, Ukraine war and other global economic challenges. Mar the margin at times may vary in particular quarters with the nature of contracts executed, bidding up with propositions, etc. However, the overall EBITDA margin ranges between 14 to 15 percent. 
with various strategic initiatives such as expansion of capacity, launch of indigenously designed products, continued backward and horizontal integration, investment in R&D, and geographical expansion. Operational margins are aimed to be increased by 4 to 5 percent in two years' time. The current growth being witnessed in the telecom market worldwide brings in optimism and new opportunities. We look for in 2024 and beyond with great optimism as our strategic initiatives are expected to bring significant growth in revenue and profitability. At the end, I would like to reiterate that we remain focused on our region to become a leader in our industry. And with all initiatives being undertaken, such as Use and focus on R&D, backward integration, capacity expansion, geographical expansion, developing margin aggregating new products. We are confident that these strategic initiatives will position us for long-term success. Our team is dedicated to delivering value to our shareholders, and we will continue to work tirelessly to achieve our goals. Thank, thank you once again for your team participation. With this, I conclude my opening remarks and open the floor for caution and satisfaction. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Thank you. We take the first question from the line of Mr. Bala Subramaniam from Arihant Capital. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Thank you so much for taking my question. My first question, uh, like we are launching around seven to eight 5G products from Q2 FI24 to Q1 FI25. Uh, what would be the telecom revenue share is expected to reach in FI25? And in last quarter's uh, telecom products margins are around 19%. We may expect uh, about 20% kind of margins uh, uh, to do these new launches. Uh, these are my first questions. As I said, the telecom and network sort of revenue is targeted to reach 800 to 1,000 crores in FI25. And this significant growth is going to come from new products which we are launching. As I've said in my opening remarks, a number of new products are going to be launched in the current financial year. And we are in advanced stage of development. So once these products are launched, revenue is definitely going to increase multiple times, and it is targeted at 800 to 1,000 crores in FY25. And number two, as a margin concern, since the products are our own designed and manufactured, we certainly have better margin. We certainly have much better margin than 19%. Okay, got it, sir. Sir, in Q4 FI23, uh, turnkey contracts witnessed uh, margin less than 5%. Any specific reasons for that? But, you know, many times contracts are you know, designed in such a way, or the our bidding is done in such a way that, you know, in a particular phase, the profitability is higher because payments are received earlier in that phase. And uh, in uh, some phase, the profitability is lower. So it varies margins on EPC contracts may vary from quarter on quarter, depending on a type and part of contract executed in a particular quarter. So what happens in this particular quarter, the EPC contracts which have been executed, the part of that was at a lower margin. So you see lower margin in this particular quarter, which is a bit of an aberration also, but it has happened like that. However, overall EBITDA margins in terms of projects ranges between 8 to 12 percent. Now, with increasing share of revenue from product business, EBITDA margin over the or basis are also increasing on year to year and currently ranging between 14 to 15 percent. The margins are now planned to be increased further with high well level backward integration and introduction and launch of indigenous travel products on an overall basis. But 10 key margins, this particular quarter, 
you know, it was low because, you know, a uh, particular type of contract. So, but however, the overall margins are intact and it will increase in future. Okay, got it, sir. Sir, uh, on the uh, railway side, uh, recently we won, uh, we got uh, Surat Metro Rail Projects Phase 1. Like any further tender or projects are lined up, like how we are comfortable to execution on railway projects. Because nowadays, uh, railway projects are more competitive and the margins are uh, slightly lower. Uh, what, what's your thought process on that, sir? So, you know, we have got a very preeminent position in railway uh, communication business in the country. In a sense that not only we have executed uh, contracts in India, but we have executed contracts in uh, other countries also, like Mauritius, uh, Bangladesh. So we will continue to be in this business. And also the margins vary from contract to contract. Yes, it is competitive. But it is a niche area which will bring us good revenue and profitability both. As far as Surat Metro contract, this will be executed as has been planned. And we have built into many other contracts also, different metro, you know, where uh, metro extensions are coming up or new metro lines are coming up. We are built into the contracts. We are confident that we should be able to get more orders. As you know, uh, Kanpur and Agra Metro, we have got direct orders. They are already getting executed by us. And uh, similarly, we are uh, working on various other metro contracts where we expect uh, reasonably good order position. So on the margin side on railway projects, uh, like uh, how the margins are? It, it, it is something like time contracts only. Only problem with the railway projects is the revenue comes late. You know, in a sense that, you know, telecom is the last thing to be done. And the contracts are awarded when the metro is planned. Then, you know, civil work is done, electrical work is done, and all kinds of things are done. Then, then uh, you know, uh, this uh, telecom uh, business comes up. So, it, you know, it's not that, you know, the, you got the order and it will be getting executed in one year. It will take three, four, five years to get it executed because the civil work and all that in the metro takes time. So, margins are like the 20 contracts, average margins, both margins will be 14, 15 percent without doubt. Uh, but it is like something like a 20 contract only. Okay, got it, sir. Uh, sir, on the CAPEX Sorry, side... Sir, Mr. Balas, may we request to join the question queue, sir? And we have yeah. multiple participants. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. I'll come back thank to you and queue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Balas. Thank you, sir. We take the next question from the line of Mr. Jay from KSA Securities. Please go ahead, sir. Thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, sir, I wanted to understand how do you see the global web market and uh, what is the likely impact on the company's performance going forward? So you stated. Uh, can, you, can you repeat the question? I missed few words. Right, sir. Sir, actually, I wanted to understand how do you see the global OSC market and what is the likely impact on the company's performance going forward? Uh, we have increased our export share from 7 to around 17% the revenue mix. So, uh, any color you can give uh, on the OLE uh, segment of the global market? Yeah, yeah, I can tell you. Look, you know, the one thing which has happened in the global OFC market, particularly after the pandemic, you know, this uh, demand of data has grown. And work from culture, even our limit, has so widely spread that there is a huge need of data in every home. Subsidies are being given by many countries to have high-speed data availability at every office, every home, where it is not there, or either the less speed data is available. For example, I'll give you US. They have announced subsidy of US dollars 61 billion to connect homes over fiber optic cables, to connect homes on the fiber optic cable. Now, these kind of numbers, for fiber optic cable connectivity to homes and offices has increased the demand of fiber optic cable worldwide, coupled with implementation of high speed wireless networks like 5G, for example. Some other 6G or other networks will come in future. So, demand of optical fiber cable has increased quite a bit, and it is expected that it will keep on increasing every year. The current consumption is about 600 million fiber kilometers. It is expected to reach to 750 million fiber kilometers in three years' time frame globally. And similarly, demand in India has also picked up because of large scale implementation of 5G 
as well as FTPH network, majorly being done by Reliance Geo, the demand has picked up. So globally, there is an increase in demand in fiber optic cables. So what HMC is doing in this case, one, we're increasing our capacity from 25 million fiber kilometer to 35 million fiber kilometer per annum for fiber optic cable. And for the fiber itself, from 10 million fiber kilometer to 25 million fiber kilometer. Both of these are under progress at this point of time. Fiber optic, uh, for optical fiber, once you produce uh, such high capacity of fiber, completely making, uh, making additional profit because currently, I'm going by the current data, the current rate difference between over manufactured fiber and the fiber which is bought from outside, they difference of 100 rupees. So once I produce additional 15 million, they will benefit of 150 crores to the company on every year basis. So demand of optical fiber cable was significantly and company is, uh, you know, increasing the capacity to meet demands on its customers. Now coming to exports, what you ask, you know, we have grown our exports consistently every year. Right. So my second question would be, are you taking any Ladies and gentlemen, the line for the management is disconnected. Please hold while we reconnect them. Hello. Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the line for the management reconnected. Mr. Mahata, you may go ahead, sir. Yeah, sorry. I am in U.S. at the moment, and somehow the lines are malfunctioning. So anyway, so what I am saying is that uh, with uh, increase in demand of optical fiber cable worldwide, we have taken efficient steps to meet the demand of our customers. Our exports have increased by 125% in the last financial year which we believe that 837 crores of export. We are targeting the fiber optic cable export itself between 1,300 to 1,500 crores in the current financial year, which is the financial year 23-24. And these exports are going to increase further in the next financial year with the export of networking and telecom products we propose to start, uh, which we are bringing in the uh, market and manufacturing in the current financial year progressively. So optical fiber cable, good proposition, good opportunity, and companies making out, you know, good profits from this opportunity and increasing revenue also. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We we'll take the next question from the line of Mr. Jagarwalia from O Group. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, uh, thanks for this uh, opportunity. Just a follow up uh, to the discussion that you're doing. So it basically any uh, you're not seeing any recessions, etc. Across uh, in markets like Europe, UK, or maybe some uh, US to affect. I mean, you're looking at exports to be a little robust only for current year as well as next year. Look, you know, I don't foresee any recession as such. There may be. Demand may be stagnation for some time. Stagnation in a sense that if you are selling, you know, worldwide demand is 50 million fiber kilometers per month, it may remain 50 million, it may not reach to 60 million in a particular month. But stagnation is not expected, you know. Uh, the demand of 600 million, which is there, will continue. However, capacities have increased worldwide, no doubt about that. Capacity will increase because the demand has increased, every manufacturer has increased capacity. But now, issue in export is who is able to get the market share. So what HFCL is targeting to get a market share is, you know, minuscule to the whole worldwide market. So we don't see any problem in reaching to our targets 
uh, of you know 13 to 1500 crore in the current financial year because we have gone into the additional markets in the countries we are operating through our sales people our own employees or agents we have increased the number most significantly we are working on united states at this moment us had a different kind of cable requirement which we have developed and this year we expect some significant revenue to come from the United States. So, in our case, we are increasing the geographical, we are having geographical expansion and within countries going to more customers. And major markets are US, which we, were, we had not entered into uh, till last financial year, we are now entering into those markets. So, I don't foresee any reason to, uh, you know, see that uh, we will not be able to meet our target. Like last year, we, you know, we were able to do more than our target. And I think this year also, we will definitely be able to meet our target. So fair to assume that uh, uh, no, exports can be more than 20 or 25 percent of the overall going ahead. Uh, you know, when I say that uh, about 13 to 1500 crores, yes, it can be around that number. I would not commit on exact 25 percent or 27 no, no, or 22 no, percent, no, no, no. but yes, it would be around around that number. Surely, so if uh, you can give some perspective with regards to margins in export markets, so basic or overall with the increasing uh, the optic fiber capacity, uh, so uh, how should one look at incremental EBITDA or overall margins playing out? I mean, directionally or. Look, you know, in terms of net margins, net margins on optical fiber cable export, I'm talking on overall basis, you know, it may vary from contract to contract. But overall basis, 10% should be the number you should take into account for calculation of, uh, you know, margins on exports, overall basis. You know, net margins, about 10%, uh, you can achieve. Okay. And at an EBITDA level, it would... Uh, uh... Or it depends on contract, or would it be kind of uh, uh, any different from the uh, domestic business? Look, you know, again, it, as I said, you know, it depends from contract to contract. You know, Understood. sometimes the contract Understood. is giving you less margin, sometimes more. But, 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 inherently, export margins are a bit higher than the domestic margins because uh, domestically. Uh, uh, go ahead. Working capital cycle for exports would be? You know, generally the payments are uh, working capital, you know, you can say 90 days payments. You know, generally the payments on the customers are 90 days. 90 days. Got it. Got it. Yeah. And, uh, so last question from my side. Uh, uh, would we be uh, free cash flow positive uh, this year or when can... Uh, uh, I definitely expect that this year we should be free cash flow positive. You know, only uh, you know issue I would like to raise is that we have been incurring capex also, expansion in uh, you know fiber, fiber optic cable, R and D investment. So those are targeted for long term growth. You know, so even if we are not cash flow positive in a particular year, the point is we are making substantial investment for future growth. And what we have seen, you know, like uh, for example, whatever investments are being done now are bringing in results, you know, many the R&D investment, a lot of R&D investment has been done, which is bringing in new products in the current year, and uh, this is bringing on additional revenue profitability. Fiber, for example, as I told you, that uh, we are increasing capacity by 15 million, which would cost us around 300 crore rupees, around 300 crore rupees. So, but that will bring in, expected to bring in 150 crores of profit every year, because of price difference between manufactured and own uh, uh, domestically our own produced fiber. So I would not be that much concerned about this cash flow positivity because these investments are going to be made, but they are going to bring in long-term profitability to the company in a very near future. Fair, fair. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management able to address questions from all the participants in the conference, please limit your question to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, please join the queue. We take the next question from the line of Mr. Saral Say from Insect Securities and Finance Limited. Please go ahead now. Yeah, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations for a good set of results. So my first question is, how company is likely to achieve higher revenue with initiatives taken through its R&D uh, 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 procedures? So 
want to understand how r&d is going to play an important role for increasing our revenue look you know to say this is r&d is going to play most important role in increasing the revenue as well as profitability we have to understand that you know there are two ways you can bring in new products either you have a collaboration with somebody or you design your own products so if you design your own products you have to have higher profitability and you are not restricted to a particular market you can sell it anywhere so what we have done in our r&d designing a good number of telecom and networking products which as i said one line is led by wifi and ubr kind of equipment second is 5g related equipment and some of our some of the equipment are which can be used in both cases now with this kind of a r&d infrastructure where we have got our own r&d for telecom equipment and networking products in bangalore and uh, uh, delhi and also we have partnerships for r&d contracts we have given to companies like uh, wipro companies like uvdn companies like uh, capgemini those kind of companies where we have given r&d contracts new products are coming at a faster pace now what is happening with this these products once they come in not only we will be able to meet the demand of operators in india but we will also be able to meet the demand of operators abroad we have already started quoting for these products to different operators so it, the, as i said what we are expecting these related products will bring in additional revenue of roughly about 8 to 1000 crores in the financial year 25 itself financial year 25 itself and if you see uh, compared with the current um, uh, uh, revenue from this product we only have 38 crores so with the launch of new products this product which i am talking about revenue is going to increase significantly and because these are our own designed products currently they have a higher margin our uh, profitability will also increase significantly so this is a very transformational a uh, step company has taken in designing this uh, telecom products locally uh, because these will give us uh, higher margins and moreover on the top of it there is a pli incentive given by government of india sanctioned to us for 650 crores all these are going to be added into the margin of this company of the company moreover second thing what we are doing rnd is not limited to telecom and networking products only it is the cables also fiber optic cables also we are doing lot of r&d we have got uh, our r&d center for this in hyderabad and also at the same point of time r&d people in us also who are helping us to design various new kind of cables which are required in the export market so with this design of new kind of cables with new construction we are able to get highest market higher market share uh, in the fiber optic cable market So R&D is playing a significant role in increasing revenue and profitability both. Understood, sir. When we say that we are procuring uh, products uh, from our partners like Wipro, Capgemini, are we paying any royalty to them, uh, or how is this accounted for, sir? Or it's like purchasing. So we are, you know, these are contract R&D, you know, where uh, you know one or two cases we may be paying small royalties, but this is our own IPR. They are designing for us. We have given them contract to design the products for us, then transfer the design and IPR completely to us. And our own team is totally involved in uh, designing those products. We 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 do the R&D process. Understood, sir. Sir, uh, you have given a good color on the margin, but I want to understand what could be the blended FY24 margin outlook and what steps are we taking to sustain the current profitability level, which has seen a huge uh, increase over the last couple of years. Look, you know. we have taken as i said in our presentation few very important steps to increase our revenue and profitability both and i will describe these four and five steps which are really transformational steps and need to be understood clearly that these steps which we have taken are positively going to impact the uh, working of the company now what are these steps one what we thought about the strategy of the company one high importation r&d design own products increase revenue from them and they will bring in more profitability and higher addressable market so bigger market opportunity higher profitability increase revenue which is this product we have explained in detail in earlier question second step we have taken increase our revenue from private operators as you have seen we have gone to 83% now in our revenue from private operators which used to be 
less than 30% few years back is 83% now. Government revenue is only 17%. Third, what we have done, increased our revenue from products than the, than the EPC contracts. What we have seen this year, revenue from products is almost about 56-57%, which used to be much lower than that a couple of years ago. Fourth, what we have said, that we need to increase our exports. So exports this year has increased from 360 crores to 837 crores, increase 125% on year to year on basis. So, and then capacity expansion, including backward and higher backward integration. Now, fiber capacity increased by 15 million, and that will bring in additional uh, profitability of 150 crores. That's expected to be owing to the difference in the current prices and increase in cable capacity, which is going to bring a higher revenue and profitability growth. So these steps, export increase, market size increase, our own products, higher uh, value creation products, going to more to the private operators, going more to the products than the EPC contracts. All these are bringing in higher revenue and profitability and will make it sustainable long term for the company in terms of increasing revenue and profitability both. Sir, uh, can you share uh, your capacity utilization on blended basis for the quarter and the full year? Capacity utilization in fiber optic cable is almost 100%. Almost 100 All our factories are working 24 by 7. Uh, 24 by 7. Okay, sir. I'll fall back in queue. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We take the next question from the line of Mr. Sahil Sangvi from Monarch Network. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, uh, thank you, sir, for quality and congratulations, uh, sir, uh, for, for a very good business plan. Sir, uh, I had mainly two questions. First, uh, you have uh, an order book of 7,000 crores. Can you split it in uh, uh, how much is product based orders and PC orders? And also, job and export and commission. One thing I would like to make clear. That uh, product revenue, product orders are received on a regular basis. It's not like EPC contract that you receive an EPC contract of 2,000 crores and that is registered over five years time frame. It is the product, uh, it is the product, you know, those EPC contracts are, you know, those orders are of different kind. But when you come to a product order, they are received on a regular basis, like for example, fiber optic cable. You keep on receiving orders, 60 crores, 80 crores, 40 crores, 30 crores, 100 crores. You keep on receiving orders like that. Whereas the orders for, uh, you know, this uh, you know, contracts, uh, you know, EPC contracts come in bulk. So orders would not reflect the correct position. But in terms of order book right now, uh, I would say, uh, you know, just let me get the numbers. Uh, in, in terms of orders, I would say, about 70% orders are of EPC contract, 30% would go into uh, product contracts. Right, sir. And, and this product-based uh, order uh, proportion will keep on increasing, right? I mean, uh, once we, you know, next, next yes. year we launch. Yes, then... yes, this will increase. This will definitely increase because of increased uh, number of products which are being inducted and also at the same point an increase in capacity. Right, so right. But, and, uh, but, but yeah. let me tell you one more thing. In terms of revenue, if you see, the position is reverse. Product based right. revenue is 50%. So that is the difference I want to talk about. That, you know, orders does not represent real revenue. Your orders are EPC contracts of bulk orders coming at one point of time. Product, right. on, product orders are coming in a small, large number of orders, but small quantities. So that's how, that's how you see the difference. Right, sir. And, and what would be the export domestic mix over here? Uh, export and domestic mix, you know, our export has been about 17% of the revenue. 83% uh, has been uh, domestic. Last year, it was 7 and 93. Yes, it is now 17 and 83. What we are targeting to reach to 25 in the current financial year, around 25. Right, sir, right. And my second question would be, uh, is that the margin uh, sort of trajectory that you make in these uh, uh, telecom uh, products, uh, what could that be? I mean, I understand it differs product to product, but what range can, can we expect uh, for these telecom products? You know, it depends from product to product, you're right. 
because you know some products which are uh, you know highly competitive and number of manufacturers are more but demand is high the margin is less so generally it will vary generally the net margins will be between 15 to 20% generally 15 to 20% is is the net net margin number net margin and ebitda would be sir any idea uh ebitda could be around i think 35% to 40% okay okay that's all from my side sir all the thank you thank you thank you sir we take the next question from the line of mr hemant kotaria from envil please go ahead sir uh yeah sir congratulations for the good set of numbers sir so i wanted to ask uh, when will the defense product uh, revenue contribution will rise uh, significantly in which year actually where we will see many- so, you know defense as i said in the last conference call also mm-hmm. you know it's a market with a lot of perseverance is required okay what we are doing you know working on various you know products which includes electronic fuses which includes upgradation of bmp2 which includes uh, night vision sights all all you know three four uh, which we could software defined radio uh, this kind of products but i don't expect any significant revenue coming in the 23 24 i expect revenue starts showing up 24 25 but when it shows up it is going to be highly sustainable It's difficult for us to enter into the market. It is going to be difficult for others to enter into the market. Now, what are the products which we have gone ahead with? Night vision sights for the small arms, which is for uh, rifles and light machine guns. We have designed ourselves, mm-hmm. and with cell micron technology, where the core has also been designed by us. First time in, you know, any company in India would have designed cell micron core. and worldwide also not many companies have designed 12 micron core so and we are now going into the next version we are going to be working on 8 micron core also but that is a part so this 12 micron core mm-hmm. uh, based night vision device it is already uh, quoted in tenders we have already participated in tenders mm-hmm. and uh, i expect to get some orders in the current year which we will start fulfilling in the current year so some small revenue may come up on these contracts but the higher revenue i expect starting from next financial year only you know it's long term you know it takes long time for testing trials and of things you know so night vision devices upgradation of bmp2 you know fuses all takes time you know so you know we have to invest money but finally the return would come and it would be a long term you know uh, long long term sustainable right Uh, annual demand from the uh, like uh, Indian defense industries for this kind of product in you know, numbers actually. Oh, I think you know I don't have currently number right now, but out of the defense budget of two lakh fifty thousand crores, mm. they are spending about forty percent on capital acquisition. So you can easily say one lakh crore is being spent. One lakh crore plus is being spent by government of India mm. in acquisition of uh, you know arms every year. Now, mm. the government is all that I am saying. increase production of this arms and ammunition indigenously and there is a huge huge impetus on that huge impetus on that and which is resulting in increased domestic production and domestic acquisition of this arms so the we are in late entry but whoever are there in the market they are having increase in their revenue and that would be uh, in our case also because we have entered late but the products are coming up so demand is opportunity huge and government is now saying produced indigenously so indigenous demand would go very high which is good for us so is it possible that we can achieve uh, like a 1500 crore of turnover from defense product in like next let's say next 5 years annually if and i it would be very you know difficult to uh, you know commit like that but yes okay. i can say that uh, opportunity is good okay. and we can definitely target target 800 yes. to 1000 crores of uh, Uh, revenue in next four to five years, we can definitely target. It all, you know, uh, you know, depends upon how the contracts are finalized. But yes, four to five years, we can definitely target because we have done huge amount of work in defense electronics. So we can definitely target that. You know, one of the products we have already started bringing in the market, the radars. Hmm. We have already designed and bring into the market where customer presentation are being done. 
So the surveillance that are the border and the critical infrastructure protection for short range, medium range, long range radars. All three have been developed, designed and developed by us. Right, higher technology, latest technology radars, which are already in the market. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's great. Great. If we achieve thousand crore numbers over four years. So we we definitely can target. Right, right, right. So my next question, because uh, coming year is the election year for India, so how Gango, uh, you about the, your uh, EPC and basically order book side of the business where we can have a, a large contract well, getting getting. I don't think election would much impact uh, these numbers. In, uh, you know, uh, this uh, EPC contracts. You know, you are, you are customer demand based. Private operators are not impacted at all. You know, they would do. Give contracts as they require. Yes, government contracts sometimes are at an increased pace before the one year before election because government would like to show the yes. completion of more projects when the election comes, which is natural for any government, you know, state or central oh. government. So yes, that may have some increased, uh, uh, you know, uh, award of contracts. But yes, uh, I don't see any major approval in like that. Okay. So my last question uh, for FI25, what kind of uh, console revenue uh, vision what we are uh, aiming for actually uh, as a company level? So what kind of... You know, the 4,700 crore revenue which have achieved in the current financial year, right. we are definitely aiming for increase in about 15 to 20 percent. Definitely increase because of the increased capacity okay. and bringing in new products, 15 to 20 percent, the aim is there, of course. Okay, sir, okay. Fair enough. Thank you very much and all the best. Thank you, sir. We take the next question from the line of Mr. Rakesh Roy from Umkara Capsule. Please go ahead, sir. Hi, sir. So my first question is regarding the defense bill. Uh, sir, how much margin we are making in defense business? So look, you know, Rakesh, as I said, we have not started making revenue on the defense business, so there is no question of margin right now. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. when... yeah, yes, yes, please, sir. Hello. So, uh, once the defense business starts and revenue starts incurring, yes, I expect something like 15% margin to net margin to come from this business because this is so difficult to enter in. Entry barriers are so high. So, at least you would make 15% margin in the defense business when the revenue starts coming up. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, are we, are we looking any joint venture with any foreign player to bring in new technology for in India or for... No, no, right now, right now, we are not looking at any of such joint venture. Okay. You know, discussions keep on going on, you know, a number of companies. And it are, these are going on at this point of time. Okay. But these are, you know, not at a serious level where I can say that we are bringing in this or that. Our more emphasis is to develop products indigenously. So that even if you have a small number of products, maybe revenue is less, but your profitability is high. So that's the way we are working. Okay, so in defense business and defense product, we would uh, directly bid to government or we get that order from the other, like a BEL or a, like this one? So mostly we are directly bid, you know, into the army and uh, air, you know, this kind of uh, contracts, not BEL and all that. Yes, couple of orders have come on a turnkey, which are through, uh, you know, not through, uh, you know, some other PHU has got and we got orders from them, the pre-agreed terms and conditions. Like in VLTEL, we have got a contract for, uh, you know, one of the Air Force network for uh, about 300 crores, uh, which is under execution. But yes, other equipment, you know, like thermal weapon sites and all that, we have been directed. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address the questions from all the participants in the conference, you are requested to please limit your question to two per participant. We take the next question from the line of Mr. Bala Subramaniam from Arihans Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you so much for my, uh, taking my question again, sir. Balance sheet side, uh, operational buyers credit and supplier credit, uh, credit has increased to 14 crore to 168 crore in FI23. Could you please share more details uh, uh, in that balance sheet item? So, yeah. Well, Balasubra Manian, the GRJ and this side, this is a normal business in uh, transaction and facilities being offered by these commercial banks. So what happens in some cases, wherever we open uh, site LCs, bank on their own have a scheme to uh, give us a credit of 60 days or 90 days. 
that is covered under the supply schedule and that is being shown in separately in the balance sheet. So okay, it is, these dues are against LC bonds, but being shown separately. Okay, got it, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, that is from me, sir. Thank you, sir. We take the next question from the line of Mr. Dipesh Sanjeeti from Mania Finance. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, first, my first question was actually uh, regarding the anti-dumping duty. Have we applied to the government for any anti-dumping duty for optical fibers? Because today on a uh, few of the uh, business channels, it was there was a flash that there might be in, uh, uh, an anti-dumping duty and the companies have applied for anti-dumping duty uh, on optical fibers. Optical. We, are neutral, we are neutral to this. We have not applied. Uh, we are neutral to this because our own fiber optic uh, uh, capacity for production of fiber is going up. So if the duty is more, we are, we are protected, you know, we have no problem. So what has been recommended by Commerce Ministry to Finance Ministry is yet to be accepted and finalized, but yes, it has been recommended by Commerce Ministry. So we are quite neutral to this because we produce so much of fiber by ourselves. that even if the duty is there, it is not impacting us. Moreover, the important point is, that there is no anti-dumping duty on the fiber which you use for export of cable. If I manufacture some cable for exports, there is no anti-dumping duty there. So mm -hmm. when we are importing fiber, a lot of it is for exports only. So mm -hmm. uh, we would not be impacted by that either. Domestic market, we produce enough fiber to address our domestic customers. So we would be rather protected than uh, being, you know, uh, harmed in any way. And with our increase in capacity, we have a further production. But the problem would be to the smaller players. You know, smaller players who are not producing their own fiber, they would have a lot of a problem because they will have to pay a higher price and their competitiveness will be a little lower. So I really don't support this, uh, uh, you know, anti-dumping duty because people should be competitive enough to face competition. I really don't support, but as a company, we are not interested. Okay, so but if there is any anti-dumping duty, it will be beneficial for our company since we are uh, integrated in uh, all terms. I am neutral to that. I am neutral to that. You know, and ultimately it will be beneficial. Ultimately, it will be beneficial. Uh, can you tell me? Can you share the number of uh, how much uh, is has been recommended by the Commerce Ministry? Uh, you know, it just notification came just yesterday only. It is uh, you know different from company to company, country to country. So China, for an example, where the most of the fiber is coming. Some of the companies are about 50 rupees per fiber kilometer in terms of transformation to dollar. No, 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 50 rupees or uh, half a dollar, sorry, half a dollar, half a dollar per kilometer, which would amount to about 40, 45 rupees. Some of them are little higher, some of them are little lower. Okay, as a percentage wise, how much is it? To the, as a the, percentage, if you take uh, the price of fiber as $4 on average, it would be about 11, 12 percent. 11 12 percent wow so uh okay and uh sir if we, uh my second question and last one is actually if we can give you a, uh, if you can give us a revenue mix product wise uh for this quarter or for this year you know revenue mix you know if you ask only for the you know if you look at uh, revenue mix for the products or you are talking on overall basis you know, overall basis uh as in how much uh revenue is uh Optical cables has uh, done, how much has them been the product? I, I can tell you, you know, on a consolidated basis, 57% or 56% of revenue has come from products, 44% from turnkey. Now, if you go to the products itself, green products, 87% has come from optical fiber cable, rest has come from other areas. Okay, and this is set to increase in the coming years. Yeah, you know, two things are going to happen. You know, one, the revenue from other products, telecom and natural gas storage, is significantly. So overall revenue from fiber optic cable will increase, but percentage may go down. You know, like for example, our optical fiber revenue, cable revenue has been 2,300 crores in this uh, last financial year, which was 1,787 crores in the year before that. And maybe 1200 crores years before that. 
So 1200, 1700, 2300 crores. This kind of numbers it is increasing. Current year we are targeting 2800 crores. Number will increase, but the 130 crore, 8 crore of revenue from products which I mentioned, in two years time it will go to 1000 crores, 800 to 1000 crores. So percentage in cable may decline, but overall revenue from cable will keep on increasing and networking products will increase. And from the current order book, what is the, uh, how much is the percentage of order book in uh, optical fibers? Has it been 7,500 crores? Yeah, 7,500 crores order book. How much is uh, the optical fibers percentage? It is 10%. It is 10% of the total order book currently. So okay. the, in optic fiber cable, we have a running order book. So we keep receiving orders regularly and those are executed. Yeah, that's what I said in the beginning, you know. In products, orders keep on coming in small quantities and they are keeping on being executed. So that is not going to reflect you the percentage of revenue on overall basis. But yes, orders are there and it keep on coming on a regular basis. Right. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We take the next question. Ms. Mr. Hardik Vyas from Economic Times. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, hi, sir. I had a couple of questions. The first one is... Uh, uh, you guided that roughly 5,000 crores of EPC order book we have. So I hope that uh, uh, they are not low margin orders as we saw in the current quarter, uh, less than 5% margin. And uh, they would be of the normal margin uh, kind, 8 to 12% margin. Yes, yes, definitely. Harvick, you know, we have maintained uh, on an overall basis this margin has been maintained. And this was an aberration that particular contest we executed was a low margin in the current uh, in the last quarter. I can assure you that overall basis, the margins are going to be totally intact. And in future, are going to grow only because we are not taking contracts which are low margin contracts now. Okay. So uh, uh, the other question is, sir, uh, what, what is uh, the idea on OSC pricing? Uh, has, has the price even gone up because of the demand uh, increasing in the US and world over, uh, or the pricing remains more or less the same? So the prices have gone up a bit. I will tell you the fiber realization per fiber kilometer has been higher. You know, quarter one is of the last financial year, it was about 1100 rupees per fiber kilometer for the cable. Now, in the quarter four, we have achieved the uh, number of 1234 rupees per fiber kilometer. Now, it does not mean that everybody would have achieved that. It all depends on the mix of the products and how much you've exported, how much you have given to the private operators, how much you have sold in the export market. But generally, it, yes, it has gone up by, let us say, 10% or so. Okay. Which is significant, but 10% is very significant. Uh, yeah. So my last question is, uh, what is our status on 5G products? Uh, uh, the contribution is limited uh, as, as we speak right now, but uh, uh, how, how execution is likely to pan out over the next uh, six to eight quarters? Uh, because a lot of products we are going to introduce in the market in the coming year and the next. But, you know, as I said, uh, uh, as I said, you know, 5G products are being bought up by the company. So, in another two months, it will come start coming one by one in the market. So, I would say that you know, you will see the products being in market uh, in next two to three months. Field trial and all that being done by operators, and uh, you know, orders are being placed. Orders would start getting executed. Probably even quarter three of the current financial year. Quarter three of the current financial year. So after they start getting executed in quarter three, it will uh, continue overall basis for many quarters to come. You know, absolutely, they are going to be upgraded. There are going to be new demand. Going to be demand from different other countries, different operators. It is going to be increased every quarter. So this is for the products for uh, 5G ETC as well, uh, because of uh, operators would also would be wanting us to uh, do some ETC contracts for them. So, so you know, products are products, you know. Many times operators give you contract installation commission included. That is not really ETC. That is not really ETC. That is con contract with selling products including installation commission. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so from third quarter, uh, uh, of this year on. Yes, we expect the revenue start coming up. Okay, okay. Thank you so much and all the best. 
I think operator. Now we will take one or two questions more because it's already quite a lot of time. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraint, that was the last question for the day. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Ah, uh, thank you very much to all of you for having patience and listening to the results of the company for financial year ended two thousand twenty-three and quarter four of two thousand twenty-three. and giving me the time and opportunity to explain you uh, what the steps company has taken to sustain revenue or not only sustain but increase revenue and profitability significantly in future coming years what step company has taken i really enjoyed the questions and i am sure answers would have uh, given you you would have uh, satisfied the uh, the queries which you had and thank you very much once again for your time for being on the call thank you very much Thank you sir. Ladies and gentlemen, you may directly connect to the company for any further questions. On behalf of ICIC Security, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.